I'm gonna get myself together in a minute. I don't know what's going on here. But I just woke up, it's Friday, I wanted to start this video right when I woke up, so this is what happens when I wake up and don't get myself together before I start filming. Today I have class and clinical. My clinical is actually a call shift. It's from 3 p.m. until 7 a.m. tomorrow. It's a 16 hour call shift. So I'll go to class, come home, grab something to eat, and go straight to the hospital. When I'm on call, I can't leave the hospital. It's too busy to leave anyway, so it wouldn't even matter if we could. Um, we carry pagers, but we're usually working the whole time because right now I'm in the trauma hospital and it's super busy. The past like four shifts I've had that I've been on call, we've been working almost all night and it's been so busy. So it's actually really great as a student because we get to respond to codes, intubations on the floor in the ICU. We get to respond to traumas in the ER and then we get to see those traumas in the OR. So it's just, really great and I really enjoy it and I'm excited to go there tonight. Right now all I'm gonna do is study for a little while or try to study, get some other things done. I'm not feeling very focused right now but I'm really gonna try. I really need to go grocery shopping but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna procrastinate that off till tomorrow because I don't feel like going right now. So yeah, I'm gonna get myself together and I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Now I'm just on my way to school so I can go to lecture and then I'll be headed to the hospital for my call shift. Is stress on them? Um, maybe they have underlying coronary artery disease. I'm at the hospital now. I'm on break. I've been in the case for about three hours already and it should be over soon. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing after that, but I'll be sure to let you guys know. Right now I'm just going to eat a quick snack and run back into my case. We just finished up all of our cases. It's about 2.30 in the morning, and when I get to the call room, which is where I'm headed right now, I'll update you guys on how this shift has been and what I've been up to so far. I realized once I got to the call room that I left my blankets in the locker room because I set them down when I was grabbing my stuff. Now I'm ready to go to the call room. I made it to bed finally with my blankets. But before I go to sleep, I'm going to tell you guys what I've been up to tonight. So when I first got here, I went straight into a case and was in that case for a few hours. And then I went on dinner break. And during dinner break, I got a call for an emergency intubation. So I went to the floor and did an intubation. Well, actually, it was in the ICU. And then after that, we got a call for a code blue. So we responded to a code blue. And about 20 minutes later, we got a call for another code blue. So we went to our second code blue. And then we did another case and then got a call for a trauma in the ER. So we responded to the trauma in the ER. We go to do the airway and help with IV access and all that stuff, and ended up taking that trauma straight to the OR. So we took care of them in the OR, finished with that, and now I'm here. About to go to sleep and wait for my pager to go off because we never make it through a night here without our pager going off. So you remember when I was going to bed a little while ago at 2.30? Well, it's 7 a.m. now and I never made it to bed because as soon as I got off, the trauma pagers went off and we did a trauma and then we did two more cases. So now it's 7 a.m. I'm going to change and head home. I'm finally home now and it's about 8 a.m. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. First, I wanted to update you on how the night went because I didn't have any time to vlog. I meant to like record through that shift basically as how it was going and it was completely busy. I had no time to do that at all. I only got to record a few little clips as you see. So basically what happened was I went in at 3 p.m. It was already busy. I went straight into a case that lasted a few hours. I got out of that case and during the rest of the time we had floor intubations, we had code blues, we had priority one traumas, we took trauma to the OR, we had some emergency cases, and just all that stuff mixed into one shift with not a ton of people there at night gets super busy. So usually I don't have all that stuff going on in one night. We have like a little bit of each, but last night was just crazy. It was a good night, I got some great experience, but I'm very tired now, worn out. I was still working in a case at 7 a.m. when I got relieved, so I never made it back to the call room after I made that little clip and was about to go to sleep. My pager went off, never made it back there. 
but now I'm home, I'm gonna get some rest today. So while we're on the topic of being exhausted, I wanted to talk to you guys about why CRNA school is so hard. I've been thinking about this lately, what makes it so hard? Is it that the material is so hard? Like, is the pro why is the program so hard? CRNA schools universally are just known to be hard. It's one of the hardest programs you can do. So I was thinking, doing some deep thought, and I realized what's so hard about it to me is just the burnout. It's a two or three year program, depending on where you go, masters or doctorates, you're going constantly the whole time. You don't have breaks, you don't have summer, you have little breaks around the holidays, but you go straight through all the semesters. Your summer semester is a full course load, you're in class, you're in clinic, you just have so much stuff to do and so much stuff going on. You can never really relax because there's always something to be working on. You'll have an exam one day and you'll feel relieved for like an hour and then you'll realize you have another exam a few days later. And in between that, you have clinic, you have call, you have weekend rotations, you need to pre-plan for clinic. It's just a lot of work and it becomes exhausting at a certain point when you're doing that for years straight. Now it's definitely worth it and I can cope by thinking about the light at the end of the tunnel and why I'm doing this. It's temporary, but it is stressful while it's going on and it takes up basically a ton of your free time um, when you're sitting at home. You used to be sitting at home doing a hobby or doing nothing, watching TV, hanging out. Now you know in the back of your mind like, oh I should be studying, oh I should be doing this research, oh I should be doing this, getting ready for this or making myself better at clinical. So I just find that the sheer time commitment and length of the time commitment is stressful. Another thing that's stressful is the high expectations you're held to, both academically and in the clinical area. So as, we, as I've said before, our grading scale is 87 is passing and 93 is an A, so that's a pretty high grading scale. And then in the clinical area, we're evaluating on our performance every single shift. Our, the CRNA we're with evaluates us as the end of the shift on these key points and grades us on a numeric scale. So being constantly evaluated, especially when you're a perfectionist, which a lot of people who go to CRNA school are perfectionists or type A personalities, it's just stressful because you always wanna do well and you obviously don't always do well. Sometimes you just have an off day. Sometimes things just aren't going great for you and that can be stressful when you feel like you're being evaluated. Now that I'm a second year, almost gonna be a third year next semester, we have a lot more responsibility and there's a lot more pressure on us to perform. We have the training, we have the knowledge, and we have the experience so far to be able to handle situations on our own. When I mean on our own, I mean the CRNA will be there, they'll be available, but they'll let you work on your own to see what you can do without being prompted. And that becomes stressful sometimes because you're unsure of yourself still. We're still very new at what we're doing. so. I find that stressful. I always ask questions even if I don't want to because I don't want to seem like I don't know what I'm doing, but more than I don't want to seem like I don't know what I'm doing, I care about the patient's safety. So if I'm not sure about something, I always ask even if I feel like it's gonna make me look stupid or unprepared, but I always ask anyway, or I suggest something that I'm thinking and then just see what they say about it instead of just doing it. The schoolwork is hard. I'm not saying it's not, but I think the schoolwork is doable. It's just the sheer volume and time and all the things you have to do at once. Um, the studying is very interesting to me, so I don't struggle with learning the material. I think the struggle is more how much material you have to learn and how much limited time you have because you're in clinical, you're in class, you're in simulation lab, all that kind of stuff. So it's really multiple stressors all just kind of building up together. <laughs> I wouldn't say there's one specific thing that makes CRNA school super hard. It's kind of a combination of things. The time commitment is a lot. We have class, we have clinical. For example, this week I have a, I had that 16 hour call shift. I also have two more 12 hour shifts. Plus I have class. I had class right before the call shift. So I've been up now for 24 hours actually. What time is it? I've been up for over 24 hours now. So it's just exhausting and I'm gonna take a nap but then I still have more stuff I can be doing for school today the rest of the day, even after I sleep. But all that aside, it is rewarding. I do feel like I'm learning a lot. I feel like I'm progressing. I feel like every day I know what I'm doing more and more and I'm excited for my career. I love anesthesia and I don't regret going to school. So just because I'm talking about what's hard, don't think I hate school and I'm really not trying to whine or complain. I'm just trying to tell people who wonder what's so hard about it, what I think is so hard about it. 
I know I'm lucky to be here and I'm not complaining that I'm here. Okay, so that's a little talk I wanted to give you guys on what I was thinking is so hard about CRNA school. Um, I didn't really plan to do that ahead of time. I just kind of been thinking about it lately and I figured I would throw it in here. Hopefully it came out clear because I'm kind of delusionally tired at this point, but I'm gonna take a shower, take a nap, and then John and I are gonna find a hike to go on, hopefully if the rain holds off because it's looking really rainy right now. But it's beautiful, there's beautiful fall colors right now. I think the trees are at peak foliage. So we're gonna try and find a hike to go on later this afternoon and I'll catch up with you guys then. Good night. All right guys, we made it to Canal State Forest and it's very beautiful as you can see. Um, we're just doing a little exploring and adventuring. Not anything crazy, no intense hiking because we don't have enough time today, but it is pretty. I think we just missed peak foliage, but it's okay. Um, right now we're just gonna walk on this trail for a little while and then we're gonna go run some errands. Um, that'll be it, right? Yep. Just enjoy nature. I finally got a light bulb for my rock salt lamp. Thanks Erica Jade for the suggestion and telling me how much you love your rock salt lamp. I like mine so far. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it there, but I'm gonna leave it there for now until I find a better spot. So it is now about 9.20 and I'm at home. We finished running all of our errands. We hung out at the park for a little while and we ate dinner and now we're home. I'm gonna get some work done before I go to bed because I'm working actually in the ICU tomorrow at my per diem job. So I'll be there all day tomorrow so I need to finish some stuff up tonight. Um, I needed to update you guys on Abby here. She's playing with her toy, but you remember how I was telling you we were trying to get her leg fixed? Well, we ended up getting x-rays and imaging and consulted with three different veterinarians who specialize in fractures and bones and things like that. And they all said her leg isn't fixable at this point. Uh, it's been broken for too long. Um, her elbow head is completely shattered and pieces of it are down her arm in the wrong spots. It's not even really in the socket, which is why she's not using it. So they all, recommended that she have an amputation. I was really against it at first and I feel like it's just very extreme, but they said that the more she grows, she's just gonna end up with a lot of problems and that they could try and do surgery, but it has a high rate of failure and it would probably just cause more pain and might and result in an amputation anyway. So we're gonna go with the veterinarian's advice. So this coming up Friday, she's having her leg amputated and I took off Friday and the whole weekend so I can be with her unfortunately, but they say that dogs bounce back really fast from amputations and she'll be the second dog we've had that had an amputation and the first one did great. He was back on his feet within a day. So I'm sure she'll be the same. She's really high energy little puppy. And I don't really have any other big updates for you guys, but I just wanted to say sorry if this vlog is scattered and all over the place. The past two days have been really crazy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos every single Sunday to document my journey through CRNA school. And if you have any questions or comments about CRNA school or anything I've covered, feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you guys very soon.